Okay, this video is on a particular fill. It's actually kind of a general feel of what Bonham kind of used to do. But like anybody, Bonham or anybody, you know, sometimes you go through phases. Like a chef will suddenly go into a chicken phase and he'll do all these chicken phasey things. Or, you know, if you're a car collector, suddenly you'll get into Mustangs for two years. Or, what, you know, we all do it. You know, a coin collector. Like, hey, I love Roosevelt Dent. Um, the Roosevelt Dent, right? Yeah. But this particular thing, Bonham did for a while. You remember, like, if you, it's Die Hard Zeppelin, people. Do you remember in um, Presence, in the album Presence, Bonham, around that time you'll see live, like the... Let's let that microphone decompress. But you know that, Phil? I have it in a couple other videos. Well, which is essentially. And he would crash those two. Okay, look at my other videos. I have that particular fill in there. But the point being that there's another thing similar to that, like Bonham went through a phase. And you really hear it. There's a bootleg out there. I don't know what they call the song. But it's a, there's a microphone like in the room. And they're at Heli, Heli Granger, wherever they're playing. And you know it. If you hear If you're a diehard Zeppelin guy, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, in that uh, kind of song that they never really released or fully recorded, or at least we've heard, or I've heard, Bonham used to do a thing, and you'll hear me say this in other videos. I just said it in the Moby Dick video, and I think I said it in a bunch of other videos, but what he used to love to do, and, I, you know, again, a lot of drummers love to do this. Just Bonham happens to be a guy that, who got famous who we hear to it. Again, I'm not saying like Bonham's like necessarily, ah, even though I kind of think he is. But this, he used to do a thing sometimes where he would play like a 16th note feel over a shuffle feel or over a straight 16th note or 8th note feel. He'd do triplets, right? So like... See, so it's like one E and a two E and a three E and a... Even though it's still in a triplet feel. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two and three and four and five and six and. So you're not really playing four over three, but it, it goes into that. The, in other words, two, three, ba, da, da. One and two and three and one and two. Right? He did that all the time. And, but then the conversely, in a straight feel, like a... Which was very popular of all drummers back in the 60s. This is any Hal Blaine thing at the very, always on the fade out, you hear the... You know what I mean? I mean, everybody did. But Bottom seemed to do it a lot, but he, he did it not just so, so much in the Keith Mooney, Mitch mitchell -y way, which was popular, popularized by those guys, like... Bonham did in the early days, the right, but he would spread it out, he would stick it differently, okay, like in that song, something like that, but the point is, is the bass drum, I'm not exactly sure the pattern he's, pattern he's doing, but it's very busy, but what he does, like, instead of, That microphone back. Come on, Terry, get a better sound system. He'll do a triplet thing. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. But instead of going. He'll stick it. Is he'll play the sticking is between his the snare and the bass drum. Cool fill. Not a lot of folks. See, a lot 
lot of this stuff is very simple stuff that Bonham would do, just like triplets, like a triplet feel over a straight four. But he'd stick it differently. Plus the fact that his drums were really big and mic'd a certain way, and then he was using Peisty B8 Cool Guy Alloy cymbals, it gave it that sound. And I've heard him do it live, like when you listen to some of the bootlegs, you hear him do that in the studio, in straight up studio recordings. I can't remember off the top of my head if you actually hear him do that. But anyway, you'll hear that. I don't know what they call that song. Is it like Jennings Farm Blues? It's not. Or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, that's a cool fill that you can do. And, and, other, and other famous and drummers you never heard of and guys have been playing for six months do stuff like that. But it's usually not in the heavy, beefy bottom way. It's usually like... like Actually, that is a very Bonhamy way to do it. And Bonham, of course, in the early days would do that. Like, uh, communication break. Da -na 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 -na. I can't twirl the sticks to save my life. But that was a very Bonham thing to do. But instead of sticking it around the drums. just go back and forth between the hi-hat or the bass drum and the snare. So da na 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 ba 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 Do you know what I mean? So that's a very cool thing that he used to do, especially when it was between the snare and the bass drum. So but and then and then there's another part in that thing too where it's and somebody had just asked me about this. That's actually what made me make this video because I thought about making one about this particular thing but I've also kind of mentioned it in other videos but in that thing too there's uh, he goes like what is he doing? you know I can't even do it I'll be totally honest I've never tried to do it but but he, he's playing 16s well 16 note triplets I guess That's something I'm going to fart around with. And I bet if I spend a half hour doing it every day, I'll get it. But anyway, in that part... But, anyway, the point I'm trying to get is that what he does is, in that part, instead of going a one, a two, a nut, instead of a... He also will stick it straight on the, on the snare, if I recall. It's like... So the count is the same. And then there's a thing where they kind of climb up the guitar and the bass, where it's like, and you hear the same. There he's kind of playing, um, I think it's 16th. But it's, that's another cool thing he does. In other words, it fills the same time as one and two and three and four and 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 one and three and four. And when he does go to the snare, I think he, instead of going a one and a two and a three and a four and a, I think he's like one and a two and a three and a, so he stuffs instead of one and a two and a and a and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. Oh. He actually goes. He'll make it straight sixteenths, if I'm not mistaken. Oh God, I thought that would be easier to do, but again, bottom. snare part, instead of one and a two and a three and a four and a, it's one and a two and a three. So he like stuffs a, 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 like a sixteenth feel in there. So again, 
again, that's another classic bottom paradigm. Just put triplets, a triplet feel over straight four, or over a triplet like a six eight kind of thing, or a three four, to put a, a sixteenth notey feel. One and a two and a. Even though it's still, you're not really playing in, in that regard, you're just, it's still going one and uh, two and, uh, but then you double your hand into, and then make it 16 note triplets. But it gives, it's still triplets, but it gives it that one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a feel over it, okay? So um, I'm going to practice that B. Slow and you got it. I don't know how. Yeah, he was bottom. Isn't he great? I mean, he's the king. So, uh, anyway, but that's that kind of lick. Some, a couple of people have asked about it. And again, I was going to make a video on it. And then there's some, a bunch of live recordings where you really hear him doing it, and it's really cool. So, anyway, again, thanks for watching my videos. It's on eBay if you want to buy it. But then again, you don't have to. You know what I mean? If you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. But if you do, please do. Um, but again, thanks for watching my videos, and if you can make it to the Chicago Drum Show, go out there. It's awesome. It's in St. Charles, Illinois. It's in three weeks. It's, it's great out there. Bunny Carlos is out there. He's a wonderful guy. Rob Cook, that fellow puts it on. He's a great guy. He's been putting it on for 20. This is, I, this will probably be the 16th or 17th one I've gone to. I can't stand to see my disc on the floor. Come up here, disky. Like, sorry. Um, and there's a lot of folks there, a lot of great drums and a lot of good collectors and stuff, so it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching my videos. Bye.